So I'm guessing that you're learning about climate right now. And if you're wanting to know more about the net radiation budget in albedo, you're in luck because today my classmate and I will be discussing these two topics and how they both contribute to the average global temperature. Okay. What is the net radiation budget? The net radiation budget is the difference between the amount of incoming and outgoing radiation. This can be calculated through the following equation. Net radiation budget equals the incoming radiation subtracted from the outgoing radiation. This equation should always result in an amount of zero in order to have a balanced net radiation budget. Balancing the radiation budget. Of the solar radiation received by the outer surface of the Earth's atmosphere, 30% is ref immediately reflected back into space by clouds. 30% is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, and the remaining 40% works to warm the Earth's surface. So overall, as you can see, 30% is re immediately reflected, while 70% is somehow being absorbed. Now, if you look to the left of the screen, you will see in the diagram, and it illustrates the entire radiation process. Balancing the radiation budget. If the incoming radiation and the outgoing radiation numbers were to change, then the average global temperature would have to change. So either it would increase or decrease to balance out the net radiation budget again and become zero. An example, if the number of radiation re-emitted into space was greater than the amount being absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, the Earth's average global temperature would increase. So now that we know what the net radiation budget is, what is albedo? Albedo is a fraction of the sun's radiation reflected off a surface, measured between a scale of 1 to 0. It is commonly referred to as the reflecting power of a given surface. A number closer to 1 means the surface is more reflective, and a number closer to 0 indicates that the surface is less reflective. So, the albedo of our planet. The albedo of Earth is about 30%. On Earth, light-colored or shiny surfaces result in an area that reflects more solar radi radiation. This would include surfaces such as ice. Dark and dull surfaces such as forests and soils don't reflect as much solar radiation. So as you can see, the radiation hits the earth as well as the clouds. The radiation that hits the earth gets reflected and absorbed at the same time. The radiation that hits the cloud is also absorbed and reflected. A very good and commonly used example of the albedo effect is snow temperature feedback. And this would be when you have a large area of land which is covered in snow. So because it's covered in snow, keep in mind that because of the type of land that we're talking about, it's going to have a high albedo. So this means that it's going to be able to reflect, or reflect a lot of radiation. So like if you think about it, if you've ever gone skiing or snowboarding, you may have noticed that you tend to get sunburned a lot more easily. And this is due to the albedo effect. But once um, the land warms and the uh, snow melts, the temperature increases in the land and the albedo goes down because now the energy from the sun is being absorbed, heating the land, and no longer being reflected as easily. Albedo is the amount of the sun's radiation reflected from a surface. In this clip, you can see that some of the sun's radiation is hitting the ice and being reflected or absorbed. The same thing happens to the water as well. Some of the radiation is absorbed while the rest is reflected. The changes in surfaces on Earth can affect the albedo process. When humans cut down trees in snow-covered areas, this results with more radiation being reflected. If you were to cut down trees in a dark or forested area, more radiation will also be absorbed. In the same way, ice in the sea reflects more incoming radiation than seawater. It also keeps the seawater warm. When there's a reduced amount of reflecting ice, the seawater has a warming effect. Therefore, the water becomes warmer. The outgoing radiation becomes less since there's an increase in the incoming radiation. Therefore, there's a possible chance that the net radiation budget will not equal zero. This is how albedo affects net radiation. Therefore, in order to fix the net radiation budget, the incoming radiation will have to be subtracted from the outgoing radiation and have to equal zero. For example, an imbalanced net radiation surface may have really warm days, but really cold nights. This is what an imbalanced net radiation surface would look like. In order for this surface to have a balanced net radiation budget, the incoming radiation subtracted from the outgoing radiation must equal zero.